In the vast tapestry of our planet's history, there are places that stir our souls and ignite our sense of wonder. Egypt's majestic pyramids have long held this allure, drawing travelers to delve into the secrets of the ancient world. Yet, amidst the allure of the ancient tombs and pharaohs lies another enigmatic destination, quietly beckoning adventurers to its remote and mystical embrace. Easter Island, also known as Rapa Nui, Tucked away in the southeastern Pacific Ocean, Easter Island stands as a testament to the boundless ingenuity and resilience of humanity. Surrounded by an ocean expanse that stretches seemingly to infinity, this far-flung isle is a rare paradise, brimming with the enigmas of the past. Join us as we uncover 15 awesome facts about Easter Island. Number 15. The Statues Easter Island is an enchanting land steeped in history, culture, and mystery and is most renowned for its iconic and enigmatic statues called Moai. These colossal stone figures, scattered across the island, have captivated the imagination of people worldwide for centuries. Believed to have been meticulously carved by the Rapa Nui people between 1250 and 1500 CE, the Moai stand as a testament to their creator's extraordinary craftsmanship and engineering skills. Originally, it was thought that these imposing statues only featured gigantic heads, gazing solemnly toward the horizon. However, through the persistent efforts of archaeologists and researchers, the true marvels of these monolithic wonders were eventually unveiled. Beneath the surface, hidden from view, lies the rest of their bodies. These statues are truly colossal, with the tallest among them standing an impressive 33 feet tall and weighing an astonishing 82 tons. They project an aura of majesty, stoically observing the passage of time and inviting admiration and wonder from all who visit Easter Island. Remarkably, the Moai exhibit a consistent and recognizable style. The heads, while large, constitute around three-eighths of the overall size of the statues. Their facial features are easily identifiable, with elongated noses, pronounced chins, rectangular ears, and deep slits for eyes. The noses in particular bear distinctive curls resembling fish hooks, adding an element of intricacy and allure to their countenances. Crowning these statues are eyebrows that appear to be thoughtfully contoured, lending an air of dignity and grandeur. Of the 887 known moai, a significant number, 834 to be precise, are carved from compressed volcanic ash known as tuff. This material, sourced from the island itself, speaks to the resourcefulness of the ancient Rapa Nui people and their profound connection to the land they called home. The remaining 53 moai comprise 17 carved from scoria, a more delicate rock while 22 were hewn from hiking trails and 13 from basalt. The diversity of materials used in their creation not only showcases the ingenuity of their makers, but also raises intriguing questions about the symbolism and significance associated with each type. Each moai possesses its own unique charm and individuality, standing at an average height of 13.1 foot and weighing around 12 and a half tons. These statues once stood as guardians of the Rapa Nui ancestral legacy, gazing steadfastly towards the villages, watching over their people, and honoring the spirits of the ancestors. Despite centuries of study and exploration, the precise purpose and methods behind the construction of these statues continue to be subjects of debate and fascination among historians, archaeologists, and cultural experts. Some theories propose that the Moai represented deified ancestors, acting as a spiritual link between the past and present. Others suggest they served as symbols of prestige and power, erected to showcase the strength and authority of different clans or lineages. Regardless of the enigma surrounding their origins, the Moai stand as an enduring testament to the artistic prowess, engineering acumen, and rich cultural heritage of the Rapa Nui people. Number 14. There are more than 3,000 horses on the island. In the early 20th century, the island's primary mode of transportation and labor force for agriculture were horse-driven. However, in recent times, a significant shift has occurred, and cars have become the dominant means of getting around the island. As the shift from horses to cars has been relatively abrupt, remnants of the past continue to be evident in the form of roaming horses that still wander freely across the island. This intriguing coexistence of modern vehicles and these remnants of a bygone era creates a captivating atmosphere for visitors. 
Upon arrival on Easter Island, travelers are often struck by the presence of these horses, which adds a unique charm and a touch of nostalgia to the island's overall ambiance. The large number of roaming horses has become somewhat emblematic of the island's history, serving as a visible reminder of its agricultural and transportation heritage. Residents used to have fences around their properties to keep their animals in. However, the purpose of these fences has shifted from keeping animals in, as was the case in the past, to keeping them out of the areas designated for the horses to roam freely. These horses have, in a way, become a part of the island's cultural heritage and are respected and cherished by the local community. Number 13. The Name Easter Island originated from the first European visitor to set foot on the island, Jacob Rogovin. On the 5th of April, 1722, he made his historic landfall on the island, and as fate would have it, it was Easter Sunday that year. Consequently, Rogovin chose to commemorate this significant event by naming the island Easter Island. The name Easter Island quickly became popular among European explorers and mapmakers, eventually becoming the widely recognized name for this remote and mysterious island in the Pacific Ocean. Throughout the years, the indigenous name Rapa Nui continued to be used by the island's native inhabitants, while the European-derived name coexisted alongside it. Number 12. The statues were moved. The transportation of the massive Moai statues on Easter Island has long been a subject of intrigue and debate among archaeologists and researchers. As you mentioned, moving these colossal stone figures, some weighing several tons over long distances without the aid of wheels or modern technology, is a remarkable feat that has puzzled scholars for generations. Various theories have been proposed over the years to explain how the Rapa Nui people accomplished this incredible task. One prevailing hypothesis is that they used a combination of ropes, sledges, and manpower to move the statues from the quarries to their final locations across the island. In 2011, an experiment conducted by Terry Hunt from the University of Hawaii and Carl Lipo from California State University Long Beach, in collaboration with National Geographic, provided some compelling insights into how the Moai might have been moved. They demonstrated that with just 18 people and a few strong ropes, they were able to move a 10-foot Moai replica weighing 5 tons a few hundred meters using sheer ingenuity and human effort. This experiment shed light on the plausibility of the rope and sledge method for transporting the statues. The Rapa Nui people could have used an intricate system of ropes and sledges to maneuver the massive figures across the rugged terrain of the island. By attaching ropes to the statues and pulling them with coordinated efforts, they could slowly move the moai in a process that required patience, coordination, and careful planning. Number 11. Easter Island Experienced Deforestation Easter Island faced a severe ecological crisis in the past, particularly related to deforestation. The island was once covered with lush forests, primarily consisting of palm trees, which played a crucial role in supporting the island's ecosystem and providing resources for its inhabitants. The traditional theory regarding deforestation suggests that the Rapa Nui people cleared large areas of land for agricultural purposes and to obtain timber for various needs, including the construction of canoes. These canoes were essential for fishing, transportation, and possibly for moving the massive Moai statues from quarries to their final locations across the island. However, more recent research and theories have highlighted the role of introduced species, particularly the Polynesian rats, in contributing to the deforestation of Easter Island. These rats are believed to have arrived on the island aboard Polynesian canoes and later European ships. Once introduced to the island, they had a significant impact on the island's ecosystem, including the palm tree population. The rats likely fed on the seeds of palm trees and other vegetation, hindering the regeneration of forests. As a result, the ecosystem became imbalanced, leading to the decline and disappearance of large areas of forests over time. The loss of these trees had far-reaching consequences for the island's biodiversity, soil erosion, and the availability of vital resources for the Rapa Nui population. Number 10. There are only two beaches at Easter Island. The surprising scarcity of beaches on Easter Island, also known as Rapa Nui, is indeed one of the unexpected aspects that visitors often encounter. Despite its location in the Pacific and the image one might have of a tropical or subtropical island surrounded by sandy shores, Easter Island features only two main beaches. The island's rugged and volcanic landscape is characterized by the prevalence of rocky terrain rather than sandy shores. However, resourceful islanders have created man-made pools among the rocks, providing 
making suitable places for children to enjoy swimming and play. The most well-known beach on Easter Island is Anakina, located on the island's north coast. Anakina is truly a stunning sight, with its golden sandy expanse, vibrant blue waters, and the backdrop of swaying palm trees. It is a popular destination for tourists, but its beauty and tranquility make the journey worthwhile. While it may require a 20-minute drive from the main settlement area, the rewards of visiting Anakina are well worth the effort. For those seeking a more secluded beach experience, Obahi, located near Anakina, offers a quieter and more serene atmosphere. With its relative seclusion, visitors who arrive in the morning often find that they have the entire beach to themselves, allowing for a peaceful and intimate encounter with the natural beauty of the island. Exploring these pristine beaches offers travelers an opportunity to relax and bask in the beauty of Easter Island's coastal landscapes, providing a refreshing contrast to the island's rugged and rocky interior. While Easter Island may not be known for its abundance of beaches, the ones it does have leave a lasting impression on those who have the chance to visit and experience their unique charm. Number 9. A Theft of a Moai Ear in 2008, a tourist, driven by a bizarre desire to take home a piece of history, was found attempting to remove an ear from one of the sacred Moai statues that have stood sentinel on the island for centuries. A native islander, who happened to witness this outrageous act, wasted no time in alerting the local authorities. The islander immediately reported the incident to the police, describing the man fleeing from the scene with a stolen fragment of the ancient Moai clutched tightly in his hand. Fortunately, the police acted swiftly, using the islander's description and an essential clue to identify the culprit, the tattoos on the man's body. Easter Island is a relatively small community, and such distinct markings made it relatively easier to pinpoint the tourist involved in this heinous act. The consequences of this appalling act were severe, as they should be when cultural heritage is damaged and disrespected. The offender was apprehended and taken into custody. The legal system on Easter Island took a stern stance against such actions, and the man was brought to trial. The court found him guilty of theft and desecration of the island's cultural heritage. The punishment handed down by the court was not just a mere slap on the wrist. The offender was fined a considerable amount, approximately 17,000 US dollars, reflecting the gravity of his crime. While some might consider this a significant financial penalty, it was well-deserved, given the priceless value of the Moai statues to the people of Easter Island and humanity's shared heritage. However, the consequences of his actions could have been much worse. The man faced the possibility of serving a prison sentence of up to seven years for his appalling behavior. This should serve as a warning to others who might harbor similar ideas of vandalizing or looting the sacred sites and historical treasures of other cultures. In a desperate attempt to atone for his actions and seek forgiveness, the remorseful tourist took a step further and publicly apologized to a Chilean newspaper. His statement expressed deep regret for his misguided and disrespectful act, acknowledging the sacredness and significance of the Moai statues to the people of Easter Island. The incident had far-reaching implications, not just for the tourist himself, but for all future visitors to the island. As a consequence of this unfortunate event, the local authorities and island community implemented strict controls and regulations on tourist access to the Moai sites. This was done to safeguard the remaining statues from potential harm and preserve the island's unique cultural heritage for generations. Quiet absurd, though. What was he planning to do with the ear? Ooh. Number 8. It is the second most isolated island in the world. Easter Island holds the title of being the second most isolated inhabited place in the world. Its location in the vast expanse of the South Pacific Ocean makes it a truly remote and unique destination. While it was once considered the most isolated inhabited place on Earth, the colonization of Tristan da Cunha in the South Atlantic by the British in the 18th century shifted that distinction to the latter. Situated about 3,700 kilometers, approximately 2,300 miles, west of continental Chile, Easter Island's isolation is awe-inspiring. It is surrounded by vast stretches of ocean, with only two tiny islets, Motu Nui and Motu Iti, located nearby. After leaving the island's vicinity, travelers will find themselves facing an uninterrupted 2,000-kilometer journey until reaching Pitcairn Island, which itself is sparsely populated with only around 50 inhabitants. 
The remoteness of Easter Island may give some visitors a sense of isolation and distance from the outside world. However, despite its far-flung location, the island maintains some connectivity through modern air travel. The Mataveri International Airport, located on Easter Island, serves as a vital link for tourism and transportation to and from the island. Several flights arrive and depart each day, connecting Rapa Nui with Chile and other international destinations, providing visitors with the opportunity to explore this fascinating destination. While the presence of tourists may lessen the feeling of isolation for those who visit, the essence of Easter Island's uniqueness and cultural significance remains untouched. The island's allure lies not just in its isolation, but also in the enigmatic Moai statues, the ancient Rapa Nui civilization, and its captivating natural beauty. Preserving and respecting the island's heritage and environment is crucial for maintaining its allure as a destination and ensuring its sustainability for future generations. Despite the challenges posed by its isolation, Easter Island continues to attract explorers, history enthusiasts, and travelers seeking to uncover the mysteries and wonders of this remote Pacific gem. As visitors arrive, they are reminded of the island's profound cultural legacy and the need to balance tourism with responsible stewardship of this extraordinary place. Number 7. The island has its own language. Rongorongo is a language script found on Easter Island and remains one of the most mysterious writing systems in the world. It is unique in that it was created without any known external influence, and its origins and meaning continue to puzzle researchers and linguists. The surviving Rongorongo texts are inscribed on small wooden tablets and staves, but unfortunately, only a limited number of them have endured the test of time. Out of the original carvings, only 26 have been preserved, making the study of Rongorongo even more challenging. Despite significant efforts by scholars and experts, the Rongorongo script remains undeciphered. Over the years, numerous attempts have been made to crack the code and unveil the meaning behind the enigmatic symbols, but so far, no definitive progress has been achieved. The lack of bilingual inscriptions or known references to the script in external sources hinders the decipherment process. In addition to the Rongorongo script, several intriguing wooden carvings have been unearthed on Easter Island, including the Mokomero, which depicts a lizard-headed man, and the Riomero, a crescent-shaped beast with one or more heads. These carvings, along with others discovered, add to the mystery surrounding the ancient culture of Easter Island and their unique artistic expressions. The purpose and significance of these wooden carvings and the Rongorongo script are subjects of intense speculation and debate among researchers. Some hypotheses suggest that the script may have been used for religious or ritual purposes, while others propose it may have served as a form of mnemonic aid or a way to record important information about the island's history and culture. The complexity of deciphering Rongorongo is not only due to the lack of external references, but also because the Rapa Nui language itself has undergone significant changes over time, further complicating the interpretation of the script's symbols. Number 6. The island has its own currency. Easter Island, being part of Chile, primarily uses the Chilean peso as its official currency. However, the island has its own unique currency, introduced in 2008, consisting of coins, and in 2012, banknotes were also issued, known as the Rango. The name Rango is derived from the Rongorongo language, which is indigenous to the island. Although the Rango coins were designed with all the characteristics of legal tender, they were specifically intended as souvenirs, and not for regular commercial transactions. These coins showcase iconic features of the island, such as its famous statues, local wildlife, and people, among other notable elements. Back in 2007, Chile officially dedicated these coins, incorporating an innovative 3D effect that made the statues appear raised, creating an impression of standing sculptures. Now it's time for today's subscriber's pick. It features a remarkable image of a rare statue, unlike anything we've encountered before. Just look at it. The statue's head emerges mysteriously from the ground, while its massive body remains buried beneath the Earth's surface. What sets this statue apart is its unconventional creation. It appears to be fashioned from the remnants of a volcanic eruption rather than the typical carving materials. This enigmatic craftsmanship leaves us with more questions than answers. Could this statue hold the key to a lost civilization or an ancient ritual buried deep within the Earth? As we delve into the image's secrets, we invite you to share your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Number 5. Easter Island has only one town. Easter Island has a unique history that has shaped its population and settlement patterns. 
During the first half of the 20th century, the entire island was rented out as a sheep farm. As a consequence, the local population was forced to reside in a single village on the island. This village, known as Hangaroa, became the central hub for all residents since living outside of it was not allowed. To enforce this, a wall was erected around the village, and special passes were required for people to enter or leave the area. This period of forced concentration was indeed a sad chapter in the island's history. When the sheep farm operation ended in 1953, the government facilities, electricity, water supply, and other amenities were already established in Hangaroa. This made it practical for people to continue living there. Currently, Hangaroa is the only significant settlement on the island, housing approximately 8,000 residents. Roughly half of the population is of Chilean descent, while the other half belongs to the native Rapa Nui community. Additionally, there are individuals from foreign countries who may temporarily reside in the town. This mix of people from diverse backgrounds adds to the unique cultural fabric of Hangaroa and Easter Island as a whole. Number 4. The island has a cult. During the 17th and 18th centuries, Easter Island faced significant environmental challenges, including deforestation and overexploitation of natural resources. In response to these hardships, a religious belief system known as the Birdman cult emerged and became the dominant religion on the island. This cult organized an annual competition to select a new Tangata Manu, or Birdman, who would be granted sacred status and the ability to communicate with the gods. To win the title, only the chiefs of various island groups were eligible to compete. However, due to the perilous journey involved in obtaining the first turn egg of the year, which was located on Motonui and required crossing shark-infested waters, the chiefs would send representatives called hoppers on rafts made of reeds, known as pora, to retrieve the egg on their behalf. The chosen representative would find a cave on the island, await the egg's laying, and then signal the discovery to those on the island. Based on which representative found the egg, a new birdman would be appointed, and an elaborate ceremony with ritual dances would be performed to crown the winner. The birdman competition eventually ceased to exist around the 1860s, likely due to the influence of Christian missionaries who arrived on the island. Additionally, other factors contributing to the decline of this religion included the abduction of islanders for forced labor in Peruvian mines and a devastating smallpox outbreak in 1877, which dramatically reduced the island's population to just 111 individuals. Number 3. Easter Island is an inactive volcanic island. Easter Island, a remote and enigmatic place in the southeastern Pacific Ocean, is a true testament to the forces of nature. The island's entire landscape is a result of its volcanic origin, giving rise to a mesmerizing array of geological wonders. The island is essentially a volcanic hotspot with numerous lava tube caves scattered throughout its terrain. These caves form when lava flows and cools, creating hollow tunnels where the molten center continues to flow, shaping intricate underground passages. The island's volcanic nature has played a pivotal role in shaping its unique topography. The landscape is dotted with volcanic mountains, some of which are submerged beneath the ocean, dwarfing their above-water counterparts. Remarkably, these underwater volcanic formations can be up to 50 times larger than their visible portions, creating an awe-inspiring sight when observed from above. As one looks down on the island's surface, it becomes evident that the whole region is richly adorned with craters and rugged terrain reminiscent of lunar landscapes. This moon-like appearance adds to the island's mystical allure, making it a fascinating destination for adventurers and nature enthusiasts alike. Beyond its volcanic features, Easter Island is renowned for its iconic and mysterious stone statues, known as Moai, which dot the landscape. These monumental figures stand as silent guardians of the island's ancient past and have intrigued historians and archaeologists for generations. The Moai represent a remarkable feat of human engineering, considering the immense effort required to carve, transport, and erect these colossal statues across the island. Number 2. Easter Island Weapons Easter Island possessed a range of native weapons, although they were relatively limited in number. Among the known weapons were obsidian-tipped spears, short clubs, and stones used for throwing. Due to the scarcity of wood on the island, arrows were improvised, and instead the warriors employed slingshots, which were surprisingly accurate in their aim. An intriguing tradition on the island involved the use of a net, but unfortunately, the exact methods of its creation have been lost to time. Nevertheless, men were specially trained to handle this net, and its significance was deeply ingrained in their cultural practices. 
In battle, warriors were skilled in using two types of spears, a six-foot-long spear for throwing at enemies and a shorter one for close combat. Interestingly, there was no formal military or army structure. Instead, any trained individual was expected to be a warrior and fulfill their duty during times of conflict. These skills were often learned through informal means, with stone throwing and spear practice being common recreational activities at gatherings. During battles, clans were led by their chiefs, but there were no established formations or tactics. The fighting style depended on individual skill and strength, as no shields or protective gear were found. The islanders recognized a king, but frequent wars and disputes plagued the island, often arising from trivial issues. These conflicts could persist across generations until one of the involved parties was annihilated. In these confrontations, the victors pursued the defeated clans to their hiding places, destroying their habitats and capturing women and children as slaves. Shockingly, when a group knew they were destined to be defeated, they often did not put up much resistance. Even women, children, and the sick refrained from fighting back. Brutal outcomes and little strategic planning characterized the islanders' battles, yet they managed to cause significant destruction despite the limited variety of weapons at their disposal. This aspect of their history is a testament to their conflict's intensity and severity. Number 1. The Easter Island Ocean is one of the clearest. When visitors arrive on Rapa Nui, they are often captivated by the strikingly blue waters that surround the island. The clarity of the water, boasting up to 80 meters of visibility according to divers, is attributed to its exceptional cleanliness. One key factor contributing to this pristine quality is the absence of rivers on the island. Without rivers, there is no runoff to introduce sediments or pollutants into the water, keeping it remarkably clear. Additionally, Rapa Nui lacks substantial coral reefs that could contribute to water turbidity. Unlike in other regions where coral breakdown can cloud the waters, Rapa Nui's marine environment remains relatively unaffected, preserving the water's purity. Moreover, the island's limited plankton population also plays a role in maintaining the water's clarity. The combination of these factors, coupled with the island's geographical isolation, results in some of the clearest waters found anywhere in the world. The untouched beauty of Rapa Nui's pristine oceanic surroundings makes it a truly exceptional and awe-inspiring destination for those who venture to explore its underwater wonders. What part of this beautiful island do you find the most intriguing? Let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.